Uh, in Scott's absence, at least until he gets here, I'll call the meeting to order. Might as well. <laughs> and I need to read this, I understand. So the open meeting law and videotape meetings. If your meeting is videotape, open session, public meetings are subject to being recorded. Your image and voice may be recorded per the open meeting law and videotape. Everyone okay with that? Mm -hmm. no. Excellent. You're not? I just said good enough. Good enough. Thank right. you. All right, so who's first up? It looks like the town clerk. It does look like the town, town clerk, clerk, doesn't it? Hi. Greetings. Greetings. Hi. We have a budget from you, probably. Yes, I, I can pull that up. Mm -hmm. She has three budgets. We do. Oh, okay. yeah, we have. Okay. So. Would you like to explain yourself, young lady? Oh. <laughs> I'll answer any questions you have. Uh, I, I don't. Uh... Can I jump in on one of thing? Of course. Yeah. Or two things? So there are no, two. Just, just the one. Just one. Only just one. I only so asked for one. Pick so whichever pick. one is more important. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there are two changes in what I recommended from what Eloise requested. Okay. Uh, one is a step increase for the um, assistant town clerk that was recommended by personnel committee and um, select board. The other, that's the 368. The other is $1,000 under elections for additional mailing expenses associated with the fact that folks can do mail in ballots now. No, which we now have no excuse voting. Right. And I probably, usually I might have five absentees. I probably got a hundred. So in other words, you have to mail out a lot more ballots. And if you're doing the math with us, that affects FY23 as well. Yeah, sure. Which is right. a potential reserve fund transfer no, request. No, no, no. <laughs> Maybe. Don't be silly. So we wanted to obviously, since this is recent, we wanted to reflect it in the FY24 budget and budget for it. Otherwise, I So is that what that column, I can't see the top of that yep, column. Yeah, that column that is the co uh, TA recommend yep. change. So oh, well. um, that, that middle column that's bold and italicized is the TA recommendation and the dollar change over the department request. Over, yeah, right, okay. I know I wish it would pin the top row, but, oh, actually, wait a minute, let me do it like this. Oh, no, I didn't have it carry down. Never mind, I, I'll i fix that. Try the luck. Um, so the additional expenses, is there, is that one large thing? Is it just to, the additional expenses, I mean, it's only $400, but. Is it one thing or is it a cumul is it more than one thing? A lot of it's postage. That's postage too. As of January one, when you went to the RMV, you are automatically registered to vote. So if you don't want to be registered to vote, oh, then I have to send you a letter, which many of you have already received, saying, you know, this has happened, and then if you say, I don't want to be a voter, you have to trot down, give me a document, piece of paper, sign it, date it, and I have to remove you, and then I have to send you another letter saying, I just removed you. Right. Sorry, I'm I mean, it's, it. it's really getting burdensome, as mm. well as the town is growing. Sure. I don't, Stan, I don't know if you want to look at any of this stuff, but this is the there's the background stuff. So the postage is up three three hundred. Right. Oh, yeah. oh, I can pull uh, that up Dog too. tags are down a hundred. Uh, that's helpful. Yeah, I'm not I mean, sure. You know, nobody, yeah, nobody just because has it has dogs all anymore. The, What's going on with the dogs? I think people are uh, scoffing in there. I the mall and I live in Lemonster. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> people gave up dogs for cats. Uh, which one are you looking at first, the town clerks? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that went too far. So you have extra digits, Eloise. What's, uh, you have 01 and then quadruple zeros. Are you uh, 
you just more formal than others for your department for your department number oh. normally the department number is just three digits isn't it yeah i thought i was 160 161 and 162. i just want it says 01-161-000 she did, she did carried away with all of her numbers and said so there is a it, that's what everyone everyone has that full i just i hadn't seen that yeah. on their department before um, clerks are good on details, yes. Stan, and other people aren't necessarily so good <laughs> on details. I'm sure it's been there every year, and I've just never noticed it, would be my guess. I was never aware of it. <laughs> it just automatically do it. <laughs> All right, well, I don't have any other questions on the town The only other thing I was going to say is if there's a little extra money at the end, I was thinking of requesting additional help. I am getting older. I will probably run for the last time, but I would like to take some time and teach somebody. It's not a job that you can just... Mm. No, I would imagine not. You know, pick up somebody off the street. And you could get a qualified clerk from outside of town, but then they would spend an equal amount of time, time just learning the town. Yep. So, uh, but so, I didn't know how to put that in. I was going to say, so what did you mean by if there's a little bit extra at the end? What is what was your, what is your thinking? I don't know, four or five thousand. And but when you're saying that, you're saying that 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 would just there's that we sh we should be considering that in addition to what's been proposed. Probably yes. Would this would this be in the category of a supplemental budget request? That would yeah. fall under that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was it? Supplemental budget request is, is um, a, it's, a, it's a category that Kristen communicated out to everybody last fall when we kicked this off, and it's just that if you're, if you're staying within like 2.5% and whatever is going on in your sort of normal budget, but there's some added need to submit a supplemental request so that when we get to into the final budget, or, or even ahead of that, say, then we take on the supplementals and say, can we do these other things? But I think Kristen gets then a form that lays out what your plan is. Just it, it's, it's just like this, but it's got a different title, right? It, it's similar to this. I can show you an example of one. Uh, let's see who did one. I did one. You did a supplemental? Yeah. Oh, I have conservation right here, so I'll just open this one just because it's right here. Um, it's this lovely little form here. You're making me so dizzy. Yeah. You basically just say how much you're asking for monetarily, if it's a one-time or an annual expense, description of what you're asking. So if you're saying four to five thousand, um, we'd probably need to figure out how many hours that would be and what the pay well, rate would be. Well, that's why I've been trying to figure out what they would have to learn. If they were interested, I would have to pay for them to go to school. Yeah. Okay. And this this sheet is kind of good for explaining all of that. Um, and then you can kind of give a roll up summary at the top of what that you know overall cost would be. So I can work on that with you if you'd like. I would appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you. You got it. But I wanted to get the, a feel for the finance committee what their feelings were. Well, this is an essential operation of the town, so yeah, we need to make sure that it's going to continue to operate. Absolutely. Yeah, My, I'm, I'll, I'll speak first. No, I, yeah, I, don't, I uh, would hardly agree with that. You're also not allowed to leave, but yeah, uh, <laughs> saying you know, so it's pretty much a moot point. I've you know. heard we extend sentences, so you you have to stay longer. Do we have Do we have a comment from the public out there? It, it's just kind of interesting. Uh, moderate pay. That's only three and a half weeks. For the year, I don't think that's nearly enough. No, it, pro to, it would probably be, you know, the clerk's office has very specific things it has to do at specific times. Right now, we're heavy into census, and then we, uh, Peggy Sardell is, uh, I've entered them into VRIS, the census, but the people that want um, no excuse voting. See, before, if you wanted an absentee ballot, you had to get it for religious reasons or medical reasons. Now, you don't need any reasons, and people are taking advantage of that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so I figured they would have to come in and learn the different things. But my point is, over, can they learn it in a year, in three and a half weeks of quote A? That's something I would have to work out. Yeah, I don't think that's really enough. To, but my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it's something you could work with Kristen on and, and see, I mean, start plotting out what you think are the key times and approximately how long you think they would be to just to try to get a little bit more of them. It might end up being 10 times. I mean, we don't, it, you know, until you really put it down, it's probably hard to know. Well, it's hard for me to know. Sure. I've always just done it. <laughs> well, but you're going to be the one that's best going to know. We're certainly not going to know. I know. So, yeah. uh, well, right now, uh, after census, then we go into the um, nomination papers, and you just have to do it sequentially. Well, and I think the challenge is going to be for you is that it's it, is if you're trying to train somebody on a year's worth of work, as it comes, you know, it's it'd be hard to do that as it comes up rather than, you know like a three-week overlap of somebody who's leaving a job and the next yeah, person coming I, in, that's... I hope that's, that's not the case. Yeah. Can I ask the um, all-important question, then, if you're going to train somebody, does that mean you anticipate it becoming an appointed position? No. Okay. So how do we know who to train? There'll be a voter. Okay. Don't worry. All right. First criteria. Do you have any other questions for um, So your other two budgets are elections and registration, right? Yeah. Now for all state, uh, they reduce the number of days, usually open voter registration before any town meeting or uh, an election called on the same warrant was 20 days. They've shortened that down to 10 days. But it means you have a, a bigger crunch. Hmm. And like any state case. elections, you will have open voter registration always on a Saturday from 9 to 5. Versus before, it was always a Tuesday. Hmm. Um, and what they're demanding of clerks is really getting bothersome. But I don't see it loosening up. At no, all. I'm sure not. Now, are, are you seeing it that it's going to need more hours to do that work? Yeah. I do what I have to do. I would argue that the that Eloise is very generous with her hours. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say I'm pretty sure this is already far um, exceeding the hours she's being paid mm -hmm. for. I've I, been I, in this position since '96. That's going to be a tremendous loss. You just do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it grew slowly. When I first came, we had a hairline over 1,500 voters. Mm -hmm. Right now, I have almost 2,700 voters. Mm -hmm. um, you made provision for public safety when Riverbridge came in and Highland, um, the over over 55 on uh, Highland Street, and now it's filtering down to us, mm -hmm. you know, the dogs. They, uh, River Bridge, they frequently move in and just as frequently move out. Mm -hmm. There's, there seems to be a high turnover. It's yeah, not it's probably bad, to be expected it just with the is. Mm -hmm. So just the sheer volume has gone up. Mm -hmm. Eloise, is there a uh, certain number of hours that was kind of originally what you were working as town clerk? Was it so many hours a week, or was it, it was over the year? It was 15, 20 hours a week. 15, 20, but it, right, okay. Um, so, so I mean, it's not in my job description, but exactly. I have cyber security training this morning at 10 o'clock, every Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. That's mm -hmm. through the Secretary of State's office. Okay. So let, let's say uh, that you're somewhere 20 hours now. What do you think is the additional time? I mean, I'm familiar with what's going on with voting um, registration and 
of voters and then the, the voting process, because I track it very, very closely nationwide. So in the last two to three years, it's really, uh, the complexity has gone up, gone up in Massachusetts, has gone up around the country um, yeah. to sort of expand voter rights to access to the polls, right? So, but there well, is a cost to that. The open voter registration days from 20 to 10, that was as opposed to um, walk-in voting. They can, you know, you right, just, right. Understood. There was you a, just walk in. It was a compromise. Exactly. Yeah, but people are going to continue to walk. They're going to continue to ask for that same day registration vote. They're going to continue to push for advocate for that. The so problem with that is then the state better get computers for every voting of course. place. Of course. Otherwise, you can vote here. And go out west or go out north. I mean, yeah, yeah, understood. Um, so, what do you think? With those complexities added on, what do you think the hours are? You know, is it going? Is it? Is it's it going to rec- some valleys? Oh, okay, but let's take it on average. So, let's assume that when you came in, the average was the high end of the average was twenty hours a week. So now, would you say the high end of the average is twenty-five hours a week? Just something ballpark to to I help with the budgeting. To 40. 35 to 40. But it's warm here, so, you know, it has advantages. We appreciate that you like it here. <laughs> you mean the warm camaraderie and environment that... <laughs> the company of people like Stan. Right, exactly. <laughs> Kevin, Molly. Is there anything else? Make sure her, her heat stays on this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Just come to the office, Eloise. We'll keep it warm for you, right? <laughs> well, that, that's just to try to, to weigh in, you know, if, assuming we see a supplemental request coming from town clerk, weigh in, what should we be thinking about, not just this budget cycle, but the, but next, the next budget one, cycle and so on. And The next one, and, I'm uh, seriously considering poll pads. Right. Understood. Uh, at November, we left. Uh, the election ended at 3 a.m. Mm-hmm. And most of my election workers, those that had to stay till 3 a.m., said that was unacceptable. Um, so what are, what's poll pad? What do you mean by poll pads? Poll pads is electronic, electronically they check you in. But it often means machine, you can't keep your paper ballots anymore. Ah. Because you have to run them through the machine, too. Got it. It's something that most people love, our little crane ballot thing. But I thought, I thought the poll pad, the, it's really an iPad for poll workers, right? Is that what that is? The state? Yeah, but yeah, it's so all Worcester- connected with getting... Um, oh, um, We'd have to get rid of our ballots. I don't think, I don't think there's any connection to getting rid of paper ballots with that. What, what I, um, what because I because they need to be. If I needed to use the place, there's one or two places throughout the uh, state where they can count your ballots ahead of time, and it has to be able to go through the machine. But I don't take it down there. The state police come, get it from my office, they bring it down there, and it's to preserve people's privacy and make sure that there's no funny business. So those are, those are the early voting ballots, right, that you're speaking that of? Too. Yeah. So my understanding was the iPads that the state, um, the places like Worcester got, when we first had the, the possibility for early voting were, were sort of iPads, but it was for the registration of the voters. And they, they check them n- in? N- and not for the actual balloting process, but for the registration. Uh, from and what they're telling me now through the town clerks, um, they're also using it for that. Okay. And it's just when you get a massive volume, I mean, we had, what, 30 sets of people here to count ballots. And we love the ballot participation but you can't keep going until 3 a.m. No. Because when James and I came in, we had to put in another hour notifying candidates. To, you know, we have a whole list of people that we have to tell. But I will 
keep you informed. Thank you. Good evening. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Thank Eloise. Thank you. Thanks, Eloise. Excuse me. I'll defer back to you, Chairman. No. <laughs> As quick, as quick as I can. Go for the Council on Aging next. Hi. Hello. Please and thank you. Ignore the red, it doesn't mean bad. It means I haven't figured things out yet, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Victoria. Okay, so uh, as hopefully all of you know, hi, I'm Victoria. I'm hi, the Victoria. Council on Aging and Social Services Director. Been with the town now about two and a half years. Um, social Services is a newer department that was created with last fiscal year um, in November 21 um, with the help of Margaret through ARPA funding uh, to bring me up to 40 hours weekly. So I split my time at this point doing 19 and a half hours a week solely focused on council work um, with the elders. And then the other 20 and a half hours a week I'm spending uh, on general social services for the town. Could be elder related, but could also not be. Um, I have been doing some time uh, collaborating and doing some follow-up work with public safety when they go out on uh, wellness calls or any mental health calls that they feel like that would need follow up, um, I work in conjunction with them on that. So uh, as you can see here for the uh, wage requests um, for next year, it has gone up um, from the 33,544 to 70,534. And the reason why is because, um, because the social services part of my job has been funded through ARPA, Chris and the select board have been pushing to see, to get that budgeted as part of the town budget um, before ARPA runs out. I think we have through the end of 26, uh, that's uh, December 26 to technically use up ARPA funding, but if the town has other projects that they want to use, then ARPA funding can then be designated for that. Um, the wages is for the two uh, van drivers that we have on mm -hmm. staff. Um, we have one driver that works three days a week, the other driver who works two. Um, that 623 increase is the COLA for uh, the two and a half percent COLA for them. The expenses, uh, the from 14, uh, 186 to the 17,041, there's a $2,800 request. Um, that is in part because uh, what uh, I'm trying to do is social services does not have a formal budget with the town. So um, any anything that is going through um, that is social services related that I cannot count as something designated solely for the council or for seniors, I have to go to the select board at this point um, to get ARPA uh, approval or budget approval from them. So I'm asking for a budget for social services of $2,500 to use for whatever office needs um, that will arise solely related to social services. And that's the overview. And I will take any questions. So the contracted services? How contracted services have gone up because pre-pandemic we did have Tai Chi and Yoga Weekly, but with COVID they were obviously suspended. And then the previous fiscal year, we had them for reduced terms because we weren't able to fully meet um, weekly with COVID, mm -hmm. but starting this fiscal year, um, we've been able to do more having both Tai Chi and yoga uh, weekly, so that it's the cost of both of those combined. Okay. And I just pulled up that expense yeah. um, right. sheet. If Unfortunately, you gasoline has gone up um, as has postage, um, and that is very much huge expenses for the council. Um, our van, while it is lovely, is not the most fuel efficient thing in the world, so um, that's the extra increase there. And then postage with the powerhouse, uh, we've already had two postage increases since I started with the town, and I believe we're just about to hit a third, um, if it, we haven't hit one already. So those are the biggest. Uh, say, but then there's a substantial number of categories going down. Yeah, um, so at this point, what I will say is that, you know, in general, I'm trying to balance the money out as much as I can, but at this point, this is just to keep me plateaued. This is not to expand anything for seniors. This is not to expand anything that we could do going forward. So 
to keep me at status quo right now, I was able to finagle it, but if we have one more increase that winds up coming out that may be out of my control, we're sunk. At this point, the dues have gone up because we have uh, the Mass, Mass Council on Aging. They request a, a yearly due um, in July, and then our uh, Meals on Wheels is provided to the town through Making Opportunity Count in Fitchburg. They also have a strongly suggested donation that we then get hit with at the end of the fiscal year as well. When, on other supplies, that's a pretty dramatic drought. Is that something that went away? What's the at this point with other supplies? Um, that at this point, it I had to kind of cut the budget there to get the money budgeted for other expenses. That's so, what I was wondering. Yeah. I was wondering if that's what the kind of the intention was. So you're not you're not having to cut necessarily any services or any. Um, it's not dropping, or is it? At this point, with the supplies, what we've what I've tried to do is I've tried to be resourceful and, like, I am very much anti paper. So if I can, you know, not print anything or not try to buy ink, I try hard not to. Mm -hmm. they, we do have some supplies that were kind of in back stock that I inherited. So I've been trying to burn through that as well before I order anything that I do not need. And if I could add just a little bit to um, what Victoria said, I had encouraged her to include this in her FY24 budget because as she mentioned, the ARPA funding is only good through December 31st of 26. Um, and obviously that's a limited time funding. Um, I prefer to use that for one time sources of funds rather than employees if at all possible. Mm -hmm. I also hear nothing but positive things about the services that are offered to the community. Um, Victoria does a wonderful job and I think that it's a much needed service, particularly in light of COVID um, and you know the social isolation, mental health issues on top of everything else that's been going on um, community-wise where people have a need for some assistance um, and Victoria is able to fill that gap. And so I recommended, you know, if not this year, it, we at least need to start thinking about those costs and how they would fit into the budget going forward. I am recommending we put it in this year because it does free up that ARPA funding. Um, and the response we received from the board was to put it in, um, prepare, provided that once we get through the schools and everything, that we're say, able yeah. to fund yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, are you considering anything of possibly just doing even more of an incremental step instead of being right now it's an SE for one step? We could. <clears throat> That's a possibility as well, sure. I mean, I, we dealt with this uh, back when the uh, police salaries were coming off the uh, a special mitigation fund that was set up for approximately paying for two officers for 10 years. Yeah. And as we saw it coming to an end, we looked at how could we ease it into the budget instead of just taking every dollar and then one and then the next budget, every you know, two officers laying onto it. Right. And we did, did that over like the last two to three years to um, at least smooth it out better. Yep. I, I think because this is a half salary um, budget and given the fact that we do have a lot of capital needs for the town that I would like to be able to put ARPA funding toward. If this is something that we could do in 24, I would very much like to see it. I understand there are a lot of competing priorities, um, but that was my view kind of on it. If we can get it in, that would be great. One other question, looking at the expenses on there, and I'm trying to find the right budget. We covered it last time, it's under the uh, the uh, board, select board, and that was also related, it, was, it used to be called WEAT, um, that was the additional yeah. 3,000 that hadn't been basically being utilized in any way um, in the past. We added that a few years ago, and I know at that time they discussed it being like, you know, related to social service type of stuff, and you know, we were doing, you're looking at, you know, what is it, about, tw was it? $2,800 uh, increase in expenses oh, and there'd be even you know, consideration too of you know, maybe pulling it away from the select board and tr really putting it, it seems like more makes more sense being in this department's budget mm. than being under the select board's uh, um, domain 
at least what, what at least what was being proposed for for that a few years ago. I was going to say, do it, what, um, I can't remember, uh, Kristen. Did the select board change that? On the That's what I was just I was just switching back to, and then I realized yeah, you so were looking right at there, the right number. They switch back. They nope. Switch back. So they kept it at seven. Yes. But I do four. have your actuals. Four. Is it is four. Six thousand is what the actual week. Oh, well, that's a great idea. Um, <coughs> I didn't know if it had gone up or if there was potential for it to go up, and that was why we okay. had left it in there. I couldn't. As of right now, I can see remember. It through for Where is it? You haven't seen it come through? No. Okay. And I haven't heard of any. Apparently I don't know if this what is number is that one? Actually, I was trying to find myself here. Uh, 599. 599. Oh. That's why. Well, if it's 4,000 and that's what it's been, I mean, we haven't received any documentation differently. So. No, but I think um, last year was the first year that the selectmen actually requested somebody from me to find out what the services were. Okay, oh, five now, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at one now. I didn't go far enough. There it is. You need to push it up. Yeah, there's nothing attached to it, it's just level funding. But that, yeah, that shows what it's been for the past fiscal year. So it was three for a number of years, and then it went to four. And it's been at four since 2018. Right. I like that thought. Yeah, because we put in an extra 3,000 at that time. With I mean, this is the second fiscal year for it, and obviously the select board hasn't, uh, you know, had any ideas of what how to uh, expend it, and it just seems like it would be, yeah, it's the right department that should have it. Uh, something else, uh, just a general uh, knowledge for the for you all, is that um, the town has been receiving funding from the state for opioid settlements. Mm -hmm. So as of this point. Uh, we, uh, Jim and I were talking about we may have to do a special article so we can get that money to transfer over to use, um, you know, as needed. Um, I will be working with Chief Shartner to figure out how to best use that money because the opiate funding is meant to be used for education, prevention, basically oh. just with that. Um, and I've been doing some work with the Board of Health to also try to get a mobile harm reduction clinic in. The state has recognized it and they're just trying to get us a list of contractors to use um, for the services for mobile harm reduction. So that will also kind of dovetail nicely. So if we ever needed more money for opiate prevention in the future, it'll be, you know, it'll be a good foundation. And I do have that um, article on my draft town meeting warrant list to transfer the opioid funding into an article. Um, I can tell you that uh, in my previous community, that's exactly what we did. We used it for social services. Um, that social services fell under the Board of Health there, but it, so it basically went to their social services division um, for mental health, substance abuse prevention, those types of. Um, Seems very natural. Yeah, yeah. It, it makes a lot of sense. And I think, what are we at? Like, did we receive like 3,000, 3,500? I think it's a little bit more. Is it more than that? that? Okay. Yeah. My, but whatever it is that we received, we'll need to do that legally yeah. just because it needs to be set aside, but there isn't right. a direct mechanism at this time. Yeah, we have to really are appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Is that the only money that's coming in, or do you expect that will be more, or is it kind of a one time, depending on no, each settlement I mean, I think between? We're getting, uh, it's an ongoing thing. An ongoing it's over 10 or 15 yeah. years yeah, just about, for the first part of the settlement. Of thousand, and a year or something. Yep, we're about to enter into the board. Um, we'll be entering into most likely a new settlement agreement that I can't speak much about because it's been an executive session, but it's related to um, opi opioid settlements as well with mm -hmm. different companies. There are a number of these going on. So that will likely result in some type of additional settlement funding down the line as well. Is So that's not being just handled at the state level, it's being handled also at the local level or? Nope, so it's handled but basically as a, like a class action through a law firm and it basically is looked at through legal counsel. They make recommendations to their clients as to how they should do it. You can go alone, but it's very expensive for what you get back to go after the 
big guns by yourself. So typically the municipalities will join the settlements. Okay. And we are hoping that Council on Aging and Social Services will continue to grow. Um, you know, Kristen, I know, is writing up a proposal for a feasibility study of the various buildings that the town owns uh, that is currently not being used. You know, the thought is maybe down the road we can get a community multipurpose center in place for all of these various events that we would be able to do. And, you know, again, be a good conduit and a good uh, source of connection for everybody in town as well. So, um, Oh yes, and the community oh, needs assessment um, coming up as well. Will be a nice starting platform for that. Um, we do get some donations in. We do. We do. The state does give out a formula grant. Um, it's meant to be a supplement uh, for the towns. Um, I think last year uh, they were looking at about eight thousand. This year we have applied for our formula grant. It is going to be about fourteen thousand, but we can carry it over. We can use it for bigger expenses. We can use it for other incidentals as well. But the goal of that is really to be more of a supplement. And so that's outside your budget. That's not. It's part a, yeah. Of your it's technically a separate entity. Yeah. Victoria, on the uh, comment, and I was writing something, so I didn't, didn't fully register. You were saying one of the things longer term would be um, a center for? Potentially community multipurpose center. So a lot of the other local cities and towns have a place where people can gather. It could be, you know, some places have a purely just be a senior center, but ideally, I think for Berlin, it would be nice to have a place where we could have intergenerational, you know, connection right. with people, have a place that would be, you know, have, you know, Plenty of parking, ADA friendly, uh, something that, you know, again, we could have be used during the day, maybe for senior population and maybe even potentially for kids after school. Okay. Something, you know, again, this is longer term. Um, okay. But the, fees, the community needs assessment does have a few questions asking about, you know, do senior, do you know, people, are, are people interested in a place like this? And then using the feasibility study just to see what would be available uh, as a potential option. But this is, this will be down the road. Right, I, I, I heard that, and then I was curious about it because the town has spent, in recent history, quite a bit of money at the 1870 town hall. Yes, it has. And it, while I do think it is a lovely building, it is not necessarily the most user-friendly um, with the giant hill. Um, there's only a few handicap-available parking spots. Right. And um, unfortunately, you know, it, it, being in the center of town with everything else there, parking is always going to be a challenge. So. Mm -hmm. That was just something that you know we were thinking about as well. Right. Because yeah. this committee has heard that we have a lot of town buildings, and then maybe we ought to either, you know. Right. <laughs> do, in other words, do we need so another building? Study. Is why is why I I asked that question, and I think yeah. that I I think that's something in the survey that really ought to be put out there as an option because I see it as a very viable option. Mm -hmm. I get the problem with parking, but there's a lot of parking. You know, there's. You, it works for drop off it does, at a minimum, absolutely. right? And I and I and I also don't want to you know negate the beauty of both of those buildings as well. I think they're both just like indoors. They're tighter footprints. You know, there's not really much room to maneuver. They're both kind of at the capacity of where they could be. And we had talked about in capital planning. You know, if we could have a building that the town already owns, the plan that the town already owns, that we could potentially retrofit, even right. if not necessarily getting it fully up to snuff where we, we would want it to be at first, but then with time could expand and. Um, you know, potentially if we could get a community kitchen, that would be great. Um, you know, Eloise pointed out that that may be a gargantuan challenge, but, you know, it's something that, again, we could benefit from. Um, a, lot of, a lot of towns do do meals uh, on a pretty much daily basis for their residents that they can, you know, use as additional revenue sources. They'll have additional trainings, they'll have additional, right. like, camps, things like that, that. So a building like that could be used. Plus. Unfortunately, in Berlin as it stands, beyond the school, um, it, beyond BMS Auditorium and maybe the movie theater, there's really nowhere in town for more than 100 people really to gather with parking and everything else. So, it you know it would be nice to have a place you know for example like a like a town meeting um, or anything else that may come up, be able to know that we have a spot to be. Yeah, there's probably not any current properties that would fit that bill. Like I mean, when you talk about properties that the town owns, I'm not sure that. I mean, you're looking at what. 
the old firehouse, the old, you know, the old ambulance, the maybe the old highway department. I mean, what other buildings are there that? Legion Hall. Okay. I'm sorry, what was the last building? Legion Hall. Would you, yeah, actually. Well, anyway, I don't want to distract no, 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 from the main no, 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 event no, no. here. I, don't, I just. I don't want a tangent either. I just, like yeah. I said, just mm -hmm. future plans. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was actually yeah. something that I thought of for um, Riverbridge. Yeah when the whole concept was more than just what it is left with this last piece, but when it was yeah. an all-encompassing project. And, that. and I mean, we all know two people want to age in place. I mean, we want to have people stay in Berwyn. We want to make sure that we, we, can, we have, um, we are able to pay back the residents as well and in investing in them and making sure that we can be able to continue to have a place to gather and be able to, you know, show Berlin's future and continue to help it shine, so. Like I said, this is down the road, and I mean, the community needs assessment is going to be first, plus then the building feasibility study uh, headed by Kristen, and then we'll we'll be able to see from there. So, anybody else have any other questions? No. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. I know, right? <laughs> mm. Scary. Well, I'm lost, but I'm that's, that's only three lines. It's that's, not that hard, right? It's not that complicated. <laughs> no, no. One department, three lines. He's gay. Yeah. Let's mm, not make cake. it complicated, please. Right. <laughs> no. No, I'm grateful. It's all it's all done right, everything. <laughs> we try. All right, thanks. Thanks, Jim. Looks good. Looks good. Yeah. Interesting good. discussion though, June. Yeah, there's some of this behind the curtain, a little peek behind the curtain on some of these things right now. Uh, uh, well, yeah, don't think about it. But that's operates. why I'm here. Is to do all that crap behind the scenes. <laughs> well, that's part of my job. I have a question for you, if I may, about preview of coming attractions. Mm -hmm. um, Where's the popcorn? I know I have no popcorn. I'm really sorry. Um, next week we have Berlin Boylston oh, oh. schools. Okay. Um, the following week we have Asabit. And the reschedules, some of them from last week. However, building unfortunately is not able to come on the fifteenth. Mm -hmm. They can come on the twenty second. Okay. But don't we already have somebody else on the twenty second? We do. Well, we got so. recreation now. Building because there was three of them that then. Correct. Was it? Let me see. So it was. Um, Board of Health. I wrote it. Down. Highway. Yeah, Board of Health. I believe is confirmed for. Board of Health is confirmed for the 15th. So okay, the question is, could we, a building isn't much, could we squeeze them onto the 22nd with recreation and highway? I know it could be, that'd be fine. Okay, because yeah. what I was thinking too was, I obviously next week likely will take up the whole time, but on the 15th, if that's light, what we could do then is go through, the. at that point we will have, pretty much gone through most, and then we could go back through and do your votes or recommendations on mm -hmm. budgets like we did last time, <coughs> mm -hmm. if you were so inclined to end this evening. Or if you want to go this evening more, you can do that too. It's up to you. You're the chair. You get to decide. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, how many would you have to uh, look at? I mean, we covered so, all the easiest ones, I know. Yeah, so these are the ones that went to the Board of Selectmen for approval on the 30th. The accountant, the assessor. Accountant, assessor, which as we discussed, that 3312 did, wasn't in there, may need to be in there. We hadn't gotten a retirement letter or anything, so I wasn't really sure what to do with that. There's the town clerk. Conservation, I'm still working on. Um, that actually should be in red. There's the fire wages that we figured out. Um, there's, there's a, there are a good amount. 
that we still probably need to talk a little bit about. So. So the ones that are the most uh, complete there is the town clerk, professor, and accountant. Yep, right? that we just did tonight. If you wanted to do those while they were fresh in your, fresh in your mind. Yeah, does anybody have any further we want to discuss on those? Or the big picture, are, are any of these including supplementals, or is this just the, the without supplemental? What so are the looking accountant at? includes the $800 supplemental. Okay. My, my recommendation is that. Um, I'll, I'll okay, that expense thing there, yeah. Okay. Correct. Um, right. The assessor does not include the supplemental because at that time, I just wasn't, we, Molly was thinking she was going to be gone at, at, by the end of FY23. Seems things have shifted a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know what your recommendation be on that one. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit on the fence about putting through supplemental for something that's a moving target, but it looks like it's going to be needed. And now with whether it's coming in this fiscal year or next fiscal year, it looks like it's definitely going to be sometime in this calendar year. <laughs> so it's Got it. yeah, hard so to, it, it, yeah, I, I just wasn't kind of comfortable saying, we definitely need an extra 3300 without knowing the, the full time table for that. I think she did say those, she got a call back today, right? So maybe maybe we'll have a little more info. So she'd have a better. Yeah. So but we're not looking at 10,000 supplemental. We're looking at a small No, it's 33, it's 3300. We're not looking at 600 hours. We're looking at 60. 60 yeah. Unless you're going to do it for 600 hours. No, mm -hmm. somebody better fix that paperwork. Give it to June to fix it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. She's not going to That's how it works. Um, and then the town clerks Sorry, June. <laughs> did include, <laughs> the town clerks did include um, that step increase and the extra thousand for the uh, mail-in ballots mm -hmm. doesn't yet include what she, we, has what she had brought yeah. up which I wasn't aware of so we need to sit down and talk about yeah. more yeah. it's amazing how much things evolve in like two months but things change mm -hmm. so yeah. we we'll have to talk and, and yeah. come up with a plan for that um, so let's see it looks like we're firm on June's budget um, <laughs> we need to show the line numbers oh yes I'm sorry I was gonna say Janet's not here to it's okay. And somebody has to take her for Janet. What okay, are we doing? So we just need a motion? Yeah, yeah, just need a motion on the accountant. All right. Would you like a motion? I'll do a motion. So on the accountant's budget lines 11, we go 11, 12, 13. Mm -hmm. uh, I move that we vote to approve that. And we're approving the dollar amount under FY24 TA. Thank correct? you. Yes. Okay. In which case, yeah. I'll second. All right. Any further discussion? All right, uh, roll call. Scott, aye. Stan, aye. Mary, aye. Julie, aye. Mass is 4 0. Okay. We want to vote on all the lines except for the supplemental on the um, assessor, or do you want to just hold on that as a whole? I mean, we could just probably um, vote on everything except the uh, what, line 16. Yeah. So, 15, so 17, and 18. I move that we vote to approve lines 15, 17, and 18 of the assessor's proposed uh, budget here. Second. Um, All right. Any other discussion? All right. Roll call. Scott, aye. Stan, aye. Mary, aye. Julie, aye. All right. Passes for a zero. And I actually had a thought on the town clerk. Um, what if? If you want, you could vote it as is. We can always re-vote it if you decide to add the additional funding into it once um, Eloise and I sit down and speak. Right. I, I don't know if we even have the ability to, to vote to approve something if it hasn't been given to us in writing, do we? Not really. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could. Yeah. I, yeah, I would feel a little uncomfortable. Okay. But I guess I meant you could either hold off, or if you wanted to right. vote it as so it is words, now, right. and then we could amend it, it um, down the line. If you. Oh, I see. To. I see. So because we did have to do a few revotes on some line items here and there, because things do shift. It is a little bit uh, yeah. flux yeah, as yeah. this process okay. evolves. Well, I think you're going to have to also find out timing for for hers, because I, I, I don't know if it'll be sooner rather than... Yeah, that was kind of the first I was hearing of it, so... Yeah. I, I think we should just hold off until we can have a reminder of this as opposed to... Sure. What do I... Oh, yeah, did we vote the... Yeah, I, I would agree on that. I don't think it'll affect, though, the elections and registration filings or one thing. 
Probably not. No. I think we could do those. So that'd be 31 through 35 if you wanted to do elections and registration. Sure. Okay, looking for a motion? Mm -hmm. I move that we vote to approve lines 31, 32, 33, 34, 35 of the town clerk's budget for elections and registrations as submitted. Second. All right, any other discussion? You could actually, can I interrupt? I'm yes. sorry. You could do 29 through 35 if you wanted because that, that's the <coughs> part-time salary and the expenses uh, for town yes clerk. Yes and no because you may have to add part-time wages. Oh, to, to for the, the first yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yep. never mind, take yeah. back, thank you. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking that with the assessors too. We yeah. to Trying to make it that. easier. All right, uh, any more discussion? All right, roll call, Scott I. Stan I. Barry I. Julie I. And then I know you're gonna talk about building next week. Um, ConCom can wait, but one thing I wanted to talk to you about, um, the uh, fire budget, you guys heard from them, but you didn't actually take a vote on them. The select board took a vote, um, and they did a, there was a question about this reduction in the full-time wages line item, which relates to attrition. There was a retirement of a um, long-term firefighter, and the replacement was much cheaper. So that is why there is a reduction in that line item. Um, didn't know if you had other questions on that. I also look at this. You didn't vote on police either. We didn't do police or fire for you. See, these are highlighted from the ones that went to the select board. So you guys are the last column. Uh, sorry. FinCom slash town meeting nine. budget. I'm sorry, I'm making you dizzy. <laughs> FinCom. I'm not sure didn't go that fast before nine. Oh. Your town meeting budget. We're gonna have people the date voted. <laughs> we're gonna have people throwing up in this yeah, room. No, I right. do that. that I'm, gonna start putting I'm really not trying to, to make people happen. in the audience at home sick. I do apologize. <laughs> this is my personal roller coaster. Um, <laughs> So we're the last column. And yeah, yeah, those, the last column. Already, so those have all been voted on. Those have been voted on by the board. Public. It by actually starts board. with public buildings. You had Fred here too. So. I mean, and if you want to talk about those more, too, again, too, we can do that, or it's up to you guys. So the change since we discussed with the fire was there, was the fact that there's this retirement and they've uh, reduced it by just over. Almost eleven thousand five hundred. It's actually not a change. It was a question that the select board had, and I had initially thought maybe we should include it because I thought it pertained to something different, and I got it wrong. So that was my fault. Um, but this is actually how he put the budget through, and I wanted to make sure that that was accurately accounting for any coverage that needed for that was needed for holidays. But it's actually literally just a lower salary because of attrition. So. I went off script and went off my notes and I got messed up. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> As it gets late. And we, we need the line items again to the line numbers. Oh, I'm sorry. I yeah. know. I went to where you guys hadn't voted. Let me make this a tiny bit smaller. I want Thank you. Way smaller. Is that still big enough? It's all right. Yeah. All right. But are you saying we voted the rest of those on 118? All those ones that are dated 118, those are our votes? Yes. The little ones, the plumbing, electrical, yes. animal. Yeah. You, I don't think you, I were, wasn't, you were. Oh, you were. Oh, because I was near that meeting, yeah. and then the next one we ended up not Yeah, not carrying. doing votes. Yes. Right. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Okay. Well, you guys were busy. I feel bad. That was a big thing. We were here very late. Mm -hmm. we were yeah. Sorry you weren't here, because you would have made us. If you guys would have gotten out of here much sooner if I had been here, right? We wouldn't have done any of those votes. If I had been here, it would have been even later, because we would have had to wait for Stan to say aye. No, no, no. You would have said, no, we're not doing any voting. We're coming home. No, he would have started arguing with you. No. Okay, so the daylight, daylight. move to adjourn then. <laughs> then we, now we don't have to discuss anything more. If that's how you want to be. You're done. Well, I, I was sort of getting, saying too, if you if it's late and you want to talk about it another night, that's totally fine too. It's I, you know, because these are sort of from older meetings. I didn't know if it was needed to be discussed again, kind of or gone through what they were. Police. The one thing I will say on this is um, there was a debate at the select board meeting. Um, and they, there were two supplemental funding requests for police. One was for 
a sergeant for the overnight shift for 8500 they don't currently have a supervisor on the right. overnight and one was for that part-time I'm sorry the part of a year for a full-time police officer they approved the police officer but not the sergeant um, I, I am a little concerned about not having a supervisor on the overnight shift I do think that it's wise I um, there was a debate back and forth and pretty healthy debate on that one um, I did let Chief Shartner know I would mention it to FinCom um, he did feel pretty strongly about that sergeant position. How did he feel relative between the two? He would prefer the police officer okay. if he had to pick. Okay. Well, but he was hoping he didn't have but, to. Well, that, <laughs> you know, that's, that's Fair good enough, information though. to uh, yep. know that it's, if there is only one, it's, uh, they're going that direction. Correct. So and this is for, that would be for a daytime full-time police officer. And there hasn't been an increase in the number of daytime full-time police officers since 1996. So, and the calls have gone from, as Ellie was saying, calls have gone from 400 to about 1,200 mm -hmm. in that time period. Mm -hmm. I mean, annually. For, for me, uh, I mean, annually. now we're starting getting into you know, obviously bigger dollar amounts. And with the schools um, now next, I personally would like to see before I start, you know, make votes on those type of things, see where the schools stand uh, sure. on this stuff. I don't know anybody else. You mean hold votes until yeah, hold votes? Yeah. Yeah. Like, see, now we know we got ugly numbers coming in. Everybody else, yeah. everybody has their justifications. And these are the things. big ones. I and mean. right, exactly. Now, before we start touching any type of big ones, I personally would rather see all the big ones uh, evaluated together. Sure. I think that that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I, I did, I will tell you, I started running some scenarios for the school budget, and there, I don't see any way we could possibly get to 12%. It would require about a, about a $300,000 cut to the department requested budget, not even the town administrator or supplementals included to get to 12. Um, I mean, and I know they had a 20% that was the real number they were shooting for. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm hoping that we can have a robust discussion next week and really kind of figure out what the needs are and where we can settle on because when I ran the, you know, I ran it for a 20%, you're looking at having to do about a $900,000 cut to okay. The, the town side, which would be just it would decimate the budget. But what are you basing that on? I mean, we we have a ton of excess levy as well, right? So right, not that, that would I, increase not that taxes. I want to use it. Um, so that yes, there's excess levy. So I'm basing that on anticipated revenues that I see coming in, and I'm going off of FY23 recap sheet numbers right now, which are higher than FY23 budgeted numbers i'm looking at what the 23 actuals mm -hmm. came in as and what we could use for 23 based on that i don't see 24 being able to go up much over that so there could be a shift in tens of thousands of dollars but we're not talking hundreds of thousands of dollars so basically what i did was i took out the i level funded capital for Berlin Middle School and Toronto from FY23 because I said if there's going to be this huge increase at it we can't possibly do any more than level funding from 23 on capital so I just made that assumption then what I did was I deleted basically the assessments from 23 to see how much money I had left over and I ran it with a 5% a 7.5% a 12% and a 20% escalator to see kind of where our you know break even point was, um, and it's uh, it, it's looking a little bit scary. Um, I don't have those numbers completely finalized, so I don't want to share them out loud because I don't want to give out potentially false information. But um, you know, there there's just I don't see a path to twelve percent without tapping into excess levy capacity, which would raise taxes. Right. Or, yeah, you don't need to do an override because you have the levy capacity. Right. Mm -hmm. But 
you know, I don't know that that's something that, given the fact that our commercial tax base is decreasing and residential tax rates already went up this year in 23, that you want to see another large jump in 24. And we haven't seen anything yet, you know, except every first, typically in the past, you'd see the governor's first uh, budget. Um, yeah. Now the new governor, I know it always is delayed. We haven't seen any cherry sheet numbers from the governor's office yet? No, so I, I was at the MMA conference where they usually announce the numbers and she was 12 days in office. Um, so she basically said, we're gonna try to get you some preliminary numbers mid-February, but the governor's budget will not be out until the beginning of March. So I have basically, if you go back and look at the revenue pages that I've done, I level funded don't look, I'm going to make everyone dizzy again. I level funded state aid. Hurt your eyes. <laughs> I level funded um, state aid based on FY 20, um, uh, 23 actuals. So this is basically what you're at. This was the budget. The 254, 342 was the budget. The actual came in at 261, 475. So right now all I can do is assume level funded. I don't anticipate it will go down. It may go up a tiny bit, but I don't see it going up much. And that is only a quarter of a million of a $15 million budget, so it's not gonna have a huge impact um, there. The only number I'm still looking at a little bit that might provide a bit of relief is new growth, but I'm hesitant to go much more than 350,000. We did 300,000 in 23. Molly's numbers that have come in so far for 20 for the first half of 23 are coming in at 238,000 for new growth for the first half of 23. So you definitely don't want to pick up all of that because there's no way of knowing if that's going to carry over to 24. Um, I picked up 50 of it because I thought that was a comfortable number, but I don't Going to four would be tight. But what's the recap number of 497? So that's what um, the new growth came in at for, um, is it 20, it's 22, the, when we did the recap sheet. Yeah, it's the 20, I'm so sorry, now I'm crossing too many fiscal right? years and my brain is starting to get fried. So that is based off of the 22 number. 22 recap, yeah. Yeah. To be yeah. Last year's. Yeah. I'm crossing three fiscal years. I apologize. I know. But <laughs> keep in mind, as far as um, like buildings go, most of all of the permits, which is kind of what she bases it on, was already the Highland built. Ridge. Right. And we don't have any yes. new big projects that, as of right now, that the building department knows anything about. So. Right. Um, so if you're coming in though at 238, you're shy of what, 274? So it's just gonna 376? be completions pretty much is what she's gonna be picking up, I think, from yeah. here on out. Oh, 476, sorry, I can't do that this this late. Um, I just don't know what the second half of FY23 is gonna hold, so I'd be hesitant to push that number. I mean, we'd really be pushing it to up it to four, and I, I don't honestly know that I'd feel comfortable going there. But again, that's probably the biggest shift that I could potentially do. Uh, then that's where we're talking about the tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, there's no place that, unless I start pulling it free cash or excess levy capacity, there's right. no place to grab hundreds of thousands of dollars anymore. Free cash would be better for anything that's like a one-time, either supplemental right. or or capital request or right. capital request. Unless yeah. we can flip it and do the allow capital request and don't allow right. budget to go yep. completely. But well, although the capital, so once it's in the budget, it's not coming back out really because then you're making budget cuts. So if you're taking it out of free cash. You really want it to go to one time, or right. you're saying, okay, yeah. I've got $300,000 that I consistently see coming in year over year that I can put into the budget permanently and lower our overall free cash number. And we have to wait until we get our certification, but I don't, yeah. I don't know I that there's think, going to be much. Yeah, our free cash is probably going to be where it is, is because of all the drastic things. Oh, right. That we've I, thought done. We've, I thought we've been more flush than normal be, because of. Correct. COVID because we did right. a lot of like 
So definitely what we get is probably going to be like... It's one time. Really a mm -hmm. one time. And I mean, it's going to be nice, but... Well, but I think the pushback then is going to be, you know, you're sitting on all this free cash. What, what are you doing with it? Capital right. stabilization. But you definitely don't want to do it to supplement the budget. No, so but I... No, is. no. But if there's ways that we can maybe do a couple of little shifts here and there, it might yeah. be able to help with this year, but... I really think if it's one-time funding, you, you want to do your capital, you want to put it in your reserves. And at some point, we have to talk about OPEB. About, I'm sorry, what? Um, yes. Retiree health insurance. Okay. Yes, we do. As we are one of less than 10 communities in the state that do not yeah, have it. we do. What's the uh, closest uh, town near us that doesn't have it? Is, Is it Harvard? No, it's not Harvard. Um, most of them are in Western Mass. I there are a couple in Central Mass. Yeah, the smaller towns are the ones that don't have it. Yeah. There's only a few handful of them out this way. Yeah, most of them are not in this area. It's not Harvard. I'm sorry. I don't know why that popped in my head. And I have two different questions for future discussions. One, when you mentioned about the police and the evening, um, if we could just know what the impact is of not having that. Does that, is there actually a financial cost? Do they have to call in someone? Or is it bad practice? It's, it'd be like nice to know what. Yeah. Right, or is it what just that taking means, a risk? Or, yeah, yeah what does it mean right. not having it would really it's be both, helpful. and actually, you know what? I'm thinking maybe I have the chief come back on the mm -hmm. 20. Well, I, th I, know the 15th? He, I know he told us that uh, the e the third shift or the evening shift is the one that typically has their most junior officers. Mm -hmm. So you yes. also put the most junior people in the unsupervised well, position, yeah, which is the most. opposite of how you would probably do that in any other. Okay. Um, no work environment, yeah. right? right? Exactly. So, so if you could tell us, like, is this how they do it in other towns? It, just having some reference right. would be helpful on that. Yeah, I mean, my my understanding and my experience, you always have a supervisor on every shift. Mm -hmm. um, your overnight shift is when the most often more dramatic, difficult things happen. As my mother used to always say, nothing good happens after midnight. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it's kind of true. Here we um, used to be quieter. Okay, no, fair no, enough. But, you know, there we are. We do have the highway right over there. Not too far. Um, you know, it's, <laughs> I also think in terms of cost, there is a cost because what they're having the younger officers do is call sergeants in the middle of the night. And from what I understand, they get paid they, for those calls. Do they get paid for those calls? They haven't in the past generally put in but they are entitled in their union contract to put in for a four-hour minimum anytime they so, get a so call. So they haven't been doing it before, but no. now that they have a contract, they well, could. Well, they, they could have been doing it all along, but okay. it was sort of like they were kind of doing it with the understanding that they would eventually get an officer, a supervisor on the night shift so that these other officers wouldn't have to be woken up in the middle of the night to assist the younger officers. Okay. And I think the chief can explain that a little bit better. Okay. Um, and I don't think anyone's trying to do anything extortion like saying oh now we're going to put in for all this money it's not like that it's a situation of how many times do you give and give and give and, and push and push in the middle mm -hmm. of the night when you're just like oh my god like really mm -hmm. there needs to be somebody there to take these calls it becomes a situation where gee mm -hmm. people are taking on extra work that they're not getting paid for okay. so we've run into that before and i think it was when um the CPA was here, they were talking yep. about their projects, and those have to go to town meeting. They do. And they had wanted us to have input, and um, one of the things that's, again, kind of hard, it would be nice to know if the projects that they end up proposing, what the financial long-term financial impact to the town is. Because of the proposing things that have no ongoing cost, that doesn't really have a financial impact, so we don't really have, we could say, oh, that's a nice idea, this is really great for the quality of life of the town, but it's not having a financial impact. But if they're proposing things that are gonna have either need ongoing maintenance or other funding to keep it going, uh, it would be nice if they were telling us that because then that would give us more information to go on to make an assessment. Sure. That's a, I mean, there's an annual assessment for CPA, yeah. um, you know, that, that 
automatically comes out of tax rates and they have to work within that budget. No, no, but if they're like it's if they're pr I, proposing like they're oh, talking about like, like they're proposing an a new building. Cost. They're proposing a new building, like yeah. um, a new structure. So it'd just be nice to know, well, who's gonna cover maintenance for that? You know, does that go back to the town? Is that expected to go I back see, to right. recreation? So, so, well, Right. There's right. There's all. There's already existing situations like that, like the conservation land that's up near um, uh, Terrian's place. Yeah. That that there's maintenance that's required, but that that wasn't part of acquiring that land. That's just that ends up in the operating budget in the form of the highway. Oh, oh, oh like the maintaining a, of, a trail or maintaining the parking area. We have area. a lot of maintenance that we're a lot of maintenance. So, so it'd be it'd be nice if we just knew yeah. that. Oh, we have to. I agree. We yeah. have to budget mm -hmm. for this, so, and, yep. yep, you know, and if it doesn't have that cost, great, but it'd be nice to know when you're trying to make a decision, is this a good thing or a bad thing, it, it what the long-term costs are. Yep, no, I, I follow what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, we discussed this last time with one of the first projects was um, when they get the, uh, the new basketball, tennis courts, or whatever down there saying it's like what was in there previously I think they said went back to like the late 60s it was built in there and then nobody maintained it because the concrete just broke right, up and all right. this stuff and going forward it's like well should you be doing something next you know sealing or doing other type of maintenance that you know even if it's only a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars a year but a CPA keeps bringing in new projects new projects and every one has a one thousand two thousand three thousand dollar average maintenance or 10 years, 20 years down the road, mm. things are going to break and all of a sudden we're looking at all this coming out of the budget and we can't mm. fund it through CPA. It makes one of the problems with CPA. Well, that was it, my question, that, that the ongoing maintenance cannot be funded no, through CPA? It, it is one of the, the holes in that whole yeah. thing. I mean, it is mm. something that can be you know, taken away from other things in town 10, 20 years from now. You say you have this nice stuff now, but you will have to deal with these problems down the road. Yep. It's a replacement or... Well, I think then, you know, we need to get them to give us an, at least some type of estimate of long-term costs, and it has to be somehow worked into the budget. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly. Well, that's what I'm saying. And if we're working into the budget now, then 10 years down the line, we've right. already anticipated it. We can keep it going. We're not right. going to have this... Thing that was wonderful for a couple of years and then it didn't get taken care of like like you're just saying about the tennis courts um in the past so i know it, it makes sense there's a vehicle i think to do this cpa has a project request form i don't know what it's called but they have you know somebody can people can come in and say i've got a historical project or i've got a concert you know i've got a recreational project that i would like to submit to the cpa uh committee and and mm -hmm. see if they'll put see if they'll agree to fund it and then have the town vote if if the, those proposals that are submitted are required to put in an estimate of long-term operating costs then you start to get that they're mentality to because they're supposed to also go through capital and with capital they actually usually talk about um added costs but capital wouldn't really be the fund ongoing maintenance no, but I'm just saying that when you present your capital project, it should also mm -hmm. be in there somewhere that it says that, you know, this is going to increase my budget by $1,000 because I'm going to need electricity to, mm -hmm. what, you know. I like I mean? the idea of it, it on the CPA form. Well, yeah, to Julie's point is to get CPA talking about it before they approve a project. Right. Yeah. So that when the project comes to town meeting, CPA is ready to speak to it, and we're ready to speak yeah. to it. And yeah. I know that they are in the process of making some changes because of okay. the first round went through, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of issues that came up from that. Okay. Um, so that is, I think, one of the other things that they were going to um, yeah, address it really, also. Yeah, it really ought to be part of that very early assessment. With capital, usually that, that was one of the things, too, is that it's great if you get something, but now what are we going to need to maintain it or fund yeah. it or... Whatever. Well, right, and if you're voting on it and you're not voting on the whole picture, you, you need to have an understanding of all of the ramifications yes. and aspects of the project, not just we build it, they will come, but like what happens in 10 we years. We come and some magic money shows up in 10 years <laughs> yeah. to pay yeah. for the next. And after yeah. they come, will they take the after trash they out? Come, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Who will restrike the courts? Yeah, I mean. <laughs>
these things have but, to be. But it'll also help, because they'll, they'll have multiple projects, and then you can also compare That's right. between projects. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Nope, that um, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So it sounds like the rest of these are kind of bigger, highways bigger, so you kind of want to probably talk, I mean, there is the Council on Aging one we talked about tonight. Yeah, we'll see and hold off on that. I mean, they do have the it's large hard increase. hard to, because, it does, yeah. yeah. Okay. I have to say, it's really hard with the school because them coming in at, even if they come in at 7%, it's a huge dollar amount it's versus, huge. like, mm -hmm. I'm just using mine because mine's a smaller budget, but 7% in mine is a lot smaller dollar. Oh, right. mm -hmm. so I think that's why Absolutely. when we talk percentages, it can be misleading. <laughs> it, I think yes. it's really misleading. That's why I hit the percentage column. Because even like with the school, yeah. a two and a half percent increase is a big mm -hmm. increase. Right. Well, that's why I think so. the dollar change column is a much better, <coughs> you know, reflector. Yeah. Because when when I did the print cartridge for the veterans and it would be their budget go up by like 19 percent for right. a 50 dollar print cartridge right. I went, okay <laughs> this is presenting a way out of whack picture here you know the dollar amount is is a better indicator. but that often but, that often triggers the questions that's that's the first thing people look at those percentages the year over year what's the percent up right. in a yeah. fight with me over 50 dollars uh, well <laughs> right mm -hmm. yeah i'm not talking just about but us i'm talking the about size yeah. of the budget is, True. is that I mean, it's a huge dollar amount to come up with in tax it, it is enormous. And and I just look at, you know, I look at what we're doing. Even these supplemental funding requests are not really added levels of service. They are things that need to be added to maintain existing levels of service. If you look at call increases for PD or what Victoria is doing, you know, those are the two kind of big adds, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, that need is there currently, and they're trying to meet it. Then, as Chief mentioned, the part-time budget will go down because mm -hmm. now you're staffing those extra shifts with part-time folks. So it's not even supplemental is in some ways a little bit misleading because it isn't necessarily above and beyond a level funded or level service budget. It's really what do you need to that may be above two and a half percent, as you said, Mary, to keep things going as they're going. It's nothing extraordinary. Well, no, but the catch-22 with the schools is that when it's half of their proposed increases because of special education, which is basically an unfunded mandate. It is. I mean, then what are, you, what are they supposed to do? Uh, I, absolutely. I was actually just going to mention special ed. when Because it's, it like it's not. We're not adding. Dollars. Right. They're not adding 18 teachers to get to that. Right. They're mm -hmm. adding two positions. And, and most of the stuff is those, the wish list stuff was what's getting them up to the 20. The, the level, I mean, the mm -hmm. level funding is, is paying for special education. Yeah. Well, and their level was the 12%. One of the things basically. that um, Governor Haley did talk about at the Mass Municipal Association conference was special education, especially um, and special education funding, McKinney-Vento, which transportation for homeless students is a huge unfunded mandate as well. And she talked about um, housing um, you know, issues. So those were three of kind of the big topics that she touched on. Mm -hmm. Education, you know, and housing. Those are kind of the big areas. Yeah, that's uh, I was wondering and talk about say the cherry sheet you mentioned, you know, from the, the town state aid, but you know, what's gonna possibly happen with the uh, schools because I mean obviously we had Article One passed and so all of a sudden they knew you know they're supposed to be they didn't give a percentage of what, but they're you know, like anything they right. talk about chapter seven or anything is like where is that money in particular gonna go? Right. And you no, know, mm -hmm. is it like say SPED or something like that that is yeah. so severely underfunded and you take a small town like us and you see that you again it makes one of those things, you literally are pitting people with you know kids with special needs against people whose kids don't have the special needs but know are basically going to sacrifice Correct. for those other students Correct. and it's and the law is on their side on the special education side right. and then this is your age-old battle too of I, I call it it sounds terrible but it's, it's schools against seniors right mm -hmm. or seniors against schools because are you funding ambulance and public safety and those needs or are you funding schools and you have seniors on fixed incomes but you have unfunded mandates on the schools and there's this push and pull and I think that you know, while you've got these 
decreasing valuations with the malls and you don't have any huge projects kind of on the horizon, something has to give. And if it's an unfunded mandate, those are the first things you have to fund. You don't have a choice. So you're absolutely right, Stan, if you have to tap into excess levy capacity, there's, you know. Well, it's either that or you start up in class sizes and you're cutting teachers. Like, and start decimating your school system. Well, yeah. I mean, you're, you're, those are your two options. I mean, we're, we're, they're, they're going to be faced with, you can talk about having them come up with creative budget solutions, but the two options for them next year are going to be, if we don't give them, even if we don't give them the 12%, they will either have to cut teachers or we will have to increase level, levy, we will have to spend in the levy capacity because they can't, there's nothing else they can do. They can't, it's not just, Okay, we've just decided we're we're not going to hire these seven people we want to hire. No, it's it's they're trying to fund special education, which is mandated. Right, and, and I I totally understand that part. I think there are other things like technology and and other factors that they, you know, I don't know how much of that could be maybe phased in over a period of years. The special education is one thing. Obviously, there's no getting around yeah, it. I just, it, it I just saw those percent. The percentages of their increases it was like fifty percent with special education. Okay. So it's just, it's not just a wish list. It's a right. it's an absolute neat mandate. Yeah. It's whatever. And it is I don't know how we're going to resolve it. I don't know how we're going to get there. But um, I'm in the dark like you and are. Boylston's and Boylston's in it. It's going to be worth And Boylston's traditionally has a harder time than we do with the school budget. It's usually a, a bigger battle for them. Yeah. So even if we did accept I don't know what they have for levy capacity or, you know, even it's such, well, you know, true. some, some type of thing have, that that's, might not even be. Yeah, maybe yeah. you have to reach over to them to just see where they stand, too. Yeah. And, you know, the unique situation of the Burl Institute that's had the option of ASSA can look Aspen. a lot better. Yeah. Um, that's going to be, I mean, it's like if special education takes so much out of Tonto, certain points, like, and Boylston students don't have that quite that option. Right. Right. Uh, Berlin residents can, when they get there, it's like, okay, we'll just move to ASSA bit because we're gonna get so many more opportunities here because the Hanto does not have the, it's just not realistic for them to take on that type of special education um, role and fund um, the other students. Well, and in some ways they're, they're similar, but they're different, right? Because you can't expect Tahanto to offer the same things that Asabet offers and vice versa. So it's, you know, you're going to have a loss of students to Asabet. I don't think they can expect to compete and I, I think that's, that's a challenge. I think they have to offer a, a top-notch program for students that want to stay in that system. But I think, you know, how much does that go into wanting to compete versus, you know, want, wanting to actually just fund what needs to be funded as part of their existing programs? Because they talked a little bit about kind of competing <coughs> as of it. And, and I, I, to me, in my mind, they're kind of different things. Like, I don't know... But I, I think you explained it to me because I was confused, and it's because in Berlin, our students do have that choice Thank to you. choose Tahanto or Asabet, but the other students in Boylston yeah. do not ha automatically have the option to choose Asabet. True. So if they want certain things that a, Ber a Berlin student say, I want this. They know they can go to Asabet. Yeah, but I don't think it's unlimited. They do have the they option. Can't, I mean, they can't just take. They can't. They only take a certain no, number. No, they can well, go to other right. vocational schools. They are. Schools they and... are limited. I mean, obviously, Asabet. Um, but what it is is, they've seen that, um, what their excess or, or capacity they had to bring in other students mm -hmm. decre significantly decrease right. as more and more. Right. You could get to the point that basically nobody could be coming in from any outside of town. I mean, it could be like the charter schools, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, take um, AMSA, for example. If you're not in one of the four towns, you have no chance of getting into that school. And, you know, Asabet could get into the same point of where, you know, even a Berlin student isn't even guaranteed to get mm -hmm. in there because right. they could take up all that uh, mm -hmm. access. And, of course, our costs go up higher because our costs have been well, offset by the tuition coming in from the non-member towns. Mm -hmm. So it's just like yeah. one of those things just keep... Mm -hmm. Now, every one, one thing has an extra cost someplace else. It's a very unique situation. It is. It's, um, there's no easy answer for. And I mean, I think we all look at the one thing is the, the big killer is the um, lack of uh, funds from the state for special education. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think there's any, I mean, that's like the silver bullet is a decade of salt. Yeah, I mean, it is something the governor talked about, and I, I'm hoping that's a, a promise that she makes good on. All right. Okay, any more bad news? Um, and no. this on such a well, negative note, but. <laughs> but, I, but you guys know a lot more about the schools than I. I haven't. I don't get directly involved. But just a quick question on the special education students: is the is the cost um, if if Berlin or the the school district needs to send a special education student out of the district? Is that more expensive than if we educate that student in the district? Yeah, because there's transportation. First of all, there's transportation. And what uh, and and other it depends on their it depends on depends their, on their IEP, it Depends on their, their plan. Yeah, I mean, well, that, where the plan be, is right. It depends exactly what the every situation is it's different. different, right? Because if you're talking about a, a student with you know a, a lot of special needs, then you may not have those services to provide in house. So you'd have to got it build it out and get all new teachers, and maybe you're doing that for one or two students so, right okay so yeah. so and I, I understand that there's confidentiality aspects to this too as we talk about it in the public forum but but um, I, I would like to hear the schools say something about that Absolutely. right uh, without getting into the individuals involved what's that assessment well, it's a couple what, hundred what, what do dollars. we need to do what do we need to do to keep them in What's the cost of that look like? Yeah. Right? Because you can answer that year to year depending on the mix of students without telling us a whole lot. You, you could just, can. you know, just the numbers. What are the services we would need to beef up on? And is it, yeah. is it going to be less costly to the town, the two towns that need to pay for it? I mean, believe it or not, in certain, certain circumstances, in my experience, it is cheaper to actually pay out of district tuition depending on how Understood. the needs are so I get that you know it, it, it really just depends because you get that economies of scale situation going on too so and if different kids have very very different needs then you can't have them all together in the same classroom so then you're talking about having an aid for one person or one area for one person mm -hmm. so it gets a little bit complicated we, we had a similar situation in my former community well, I just think, uh, maybe I just need to ask that question when they're here, is did you do that? Have you done that Have you assessment? done that calculation? Of Have you done that calculation? Yeah, is, there, is there a place yeah, in other I'll services that... There's, that space, there's space restrictions, I think, is what we'll find, is that they, the schools aren't built, both Tejano and, B, and BMS are not built to accommodate mm -hmm. adding the level of the, the space required to add special education programming to the extent of not having to send them out of district, right. is where like is where, would, where would they put them? Like where them. would where would they physically have that capacity to teach those students? Right. Because it, like you said, it they can't be in the same. Okay. They're not going to be in the same classroom. No, I can see where so, the answer is simple, but I yeah, uh, I just asked for your insight. So you confirmed a couple things for me there. So that's helpful. Yeah, I also know a lot of it is the law is also oftentimes on the side of the uh, the students on these, so the parents don't feel that. You internally are really going to give them that they challenge it, and uh, now I, you you get into the uh, I got it. decision of yeah litigation costs or move on. I got it. All right, so motion to adjourn. Yes, enough said. And Janet's absent. Thank right. you.